Hey there, and welcome back to the 2013 season of Inside Butler Football. I'm your host, JoJo Gentry. The Butler football team edged another victory against Franklin College Saturday night, winning 31-28. to In just a few moments, we'll be joined by Pet Butler head football coach Jeff Boris to talk about last week's game and to talk about the games ahead. Stay with us on Inside Butler Football. We welcome you back to Inside Butler Football. Today, I have Butler head football coach, Jeff Forrest. Thank you for being in the studio Glad today. To be here. So first of all, Butler was down 0-14 in the second quarter, but they came back with a lot of energy to win the game. So what do you think about the team's overall performance? Well, I mean, like we, we talked after the game, we didn't start the way we wanted to. Um, I think it was a unique atmosphere we walked into and a team that was ready to play but I uh, was very proud of the way we, we were able to find a way to win, and that's, that's really what it was. I mean, we made some key plays when we, made, uh, when we had to make plays, and I've been around a lot of teams that, that wouldn't have found a way to win that game, and, and this group did, so, you know, you tip your hat to them. It was, uh, you know, the outcome you were looking for. The, didn't play the full 60 minutes, but got the result we wanted. So it seems that the Butler offense couldn't really get things started in the first quarter, but after they were able to make plays and gain yardage, they were able to win the game. So how was the rest of the game different from the first quarter? Well, the first quarter, we didn't match their intensity or um, you know, the fire that they came out with it, and we didn't match their execution. I mean, we, we turned the ball over. We, we, we have un, uncharacteristic penalties um, early on. We, we weren't playing to our, our brand. Uh, you know, offensively, um, and they just had an energy ab about how they were playing, and, and they're a team that you keep giving them chances they are going to score points, and, um, you know, defensively, we, we got some stops early, but um, without a lead to, to help them, they, they, they just kept, you know, chipping away at us and, and got a lead, so wasn't a great start, um, a much better finish, and uh, emotionally, we, we kind of got going there with a the defensive stop, uh, goal line stand. So defensively, the Grizzlies had a lot of success with throwing the ball through the air with 360 passing yards mm -hmm. against the Bulldogs. But in a crucial situation, da safety David Burke was able to get the interception. So what does this say about your defense's ability to make a game-changing play? Yeah, I mean, that, that's what it was. Someone had to step up and, and make a play. A unit had to, to, to make a play and, and help us you know, get going in the right direction. They made a lot of yards but they didn't score a lot of points. You know, that's, you know, that, that's playing defense. You got to make them line up again and run another play and run another play. And we, we did a good job of that. Um, you know, as, as assignment wise, um, we, we could have been sharper um, defensively, but we kept the ball in front of us and kept making them line up for the, for the most part all day. And then that interception, you know, late in the game was really the, the, the one that turned the ties 21-21. They're going to go up 28-21. Um, we get the inter interception, we go down and score, we go up 28-21. So um, that was a key play, and it was no different than the play defensively. We made early in the first and goal inside the five, and we got them to force them to kick a field goal that they, they pushed. And at that point, it's 14 nothing with a chance to be down 21, and we get a stop, and that's that led to our first drive. So um, made a couple really timely plays um, defensively that uh, helped generate some some uh, points offensively. Okay, so coach, let's take a look at a few highlights from the Franklin sure. game. Our first highlight we have, this is um, senior quarterback Matt Lancaster off the missing field goal at the end of the half, cutting down the lead to seven. Um, how important was this touchdown in the whole scope of the game? Yeah, I mean, it, to be really good, when we're really good, we, we play complementary football. When, when the defense provides an opportunity, the offense has to capitalize on it. And when the offense scores points, the defense needs to keep getting it back to them. And this is, this is what we were talking about earlier. We're down 14-0 with a chance to go down 
21 nothing. we get a, a, a goal line stop, a missed field goal, we take over and we go 80 yards, and this is leading up to halftime. I mean, this basically takes us right into halftime. So uh, to be able to finish the drive with a touchdown here and to get within seven points at half and get that renewed energy and um, going into the locker room was, was critical. So that was a, you know, a, a great way to finish that drive. And our next highlight is a touchdown from senior running back Trey Heater coming out of halftime to tie the game at 14-all. Talk about how this touchdown impacted the tone of the second half. Well, I mean, it, we received the opening kickoff, so, I mean, that was our opportunity to make it a new football game and uh, had a nice drive. And here, Trey really got us going there in the first half um, with, with some, some, you know, downhill emotional runs, but it's the guys up front here. This is just a good outside zone play that, we get a body on a body and good communication and, and trade finishes the job. But this is a critical play. This is a third and six that the um, um, guys up front create an opportunity for Trey to run it in. And our next play is a late sack by sophomore defensive lineman Kyle Annis at the end of the game to set up a late Butler field goal to ice the game. Could you talk about the defense's ability to make big plays when they need to come through? Yeah, I mean, and th this is another critical deal. They, they had a great plan. They, they were going to, they used a quick game and um, didn't allow our defensive line opportunities to, to, to get a lot of sacks. But here late, we'd taken the lead. They're kind of in a two minute drill and now have to go into more of a drop back passing game and allowed our defensive line to take over. And Kyle does a nice job inside just uh, um, Nice uh, swim move inside and makes a makes a sack here, and that's what got them behind the chains. Now it's second and long, and they're trying to they're down seven and need a score. So, kind of let us uh, let the rest of the defense alignment loose at that point and rush the passer. Okay, well, thanks for your input. No worries. Yeah. We welcome you back to Inside Butler Football to get to know your Bulldogs part of the show. This week we have head football coach Jeff Forrest. Thanks for being here. Yeah, good to be here. So first of all, to get to know your football history, when did you start playing football? I started in the seventh grade. Um, community we grew up in, um, that was as early as you could start playing football. We were a baseball community, and uh, really my dad's passion was baseball, and we, um, we were playing baseball since we you know, could throw it around. But uh, football, we started in the seventh grade, junior high. And where are you from originally? Uh, Aurora, Illinois, west suburbs of Chicago. Okay. When's the last time you visited? Do you Visit go back Aurora? often? Yeah, parents are still there, brothers there. Um, recruiting takes you up there. Um, holidays and, you know, summertime, we get back a lot. Is that where you went to high school? Yep, West Aurora High School. Okay. And tell me about your experiences as a four-year starting quarterback at DePaul University in Greencastle, Indiana. I mean, good memories. Um, teammates that are to this day my you know some of my best friends um, played for a legendary coach Nick Morosis it kind of got me into this profession the two guys really I played for in high school John Wren and Nick Morosis at, at DePaul there is, is why I'm coaching today um, just the influence they had and the, the passion for the game of football and and uh, you know the education they provided through football uh, really kind of led me down the path that I, I took and how does coaching Butler compare to other schools you've coached with, such as Carroll College? I mean, it's football's football. Uh, opportunities, uh, you know, at, at the different schools are, you know, depend on administrative support and, uh, you know, alumni passion for it and everything. I was fortunate out of DePaul to start at the University of Illinois as a graduate assistant um, in, in the Big Ten and be part of a Big Ten championship team and then go to the University of Texas uh, down in Austin with, with Coach Makovic when he went down there. So I've seen it at that level. I've, you know, coached in Division Three, like you said. I've been a coordinator in Division Two. So I've, I've been across, I've, I've seen, you know, all levels of, of football. And to me, th th this is the perfect spot for me. You know, I, I grew up a, a non-scholarship player, um, but to be able to coach um, a student athlete that's there for the right reasons, but at, at the Division One level, um, it's kind of a unique setting, so um, we, we, we really like what we're doing. Um, you know, the people we, we, that we go to work with in Hinkle every day are awesome, um, which makes your, your job uh, um, easy and in, enjoyable, and the, the, the student athletes we coach are, um, you know, the best. So it's, it's been a good experience, and 
uh, every place is a little bit unique and different, and, and this one's really special. So what brought you to Butler? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's all opportunities, right place, right time. Um, you know, I never, uh, I didn't apply for the job. You know, I got a call and said, would, would I be interested when they were going through the process? And how can you not be interested, you know, having, you know, going to school in Indiana and, and knew the, the uh, Butler name and the, the, the Butler reputation, it, it became a, you know, it was naturally of interest to you. And, and the level of play, um, you know, having coached, you, you, you know, the Pioneer Football League and you know FCS football. And so all of it was, was unique and interesting and different. And you, you go through the process. And at the time, it wasn't a program that was um, very well supported. Um, and so you, you, you kind of have some hesitation and, and, and you know, you, you, as you go in and, and look at the possibilities, I started meeting with people and calling people and talking to different people going through the interview process. And I came out of it saying, I, you know, if, if I get offered this job, I'd take it because if everything they want to do with this program is, uh, comes true, if part of it comes true, it would be the best um, football job and not, you know, non-scholarship coach in the, in the country, in my opinion. So. I was very fortunate and humbled to, to this day, eight years later, to still have the position. So how do you balance your time between spending time with family and coaching Butler? It's a hard deal. I mean, it pulls you. It really does. First and foremost, you got to have a great wife. And um, uh, my wife, Julie, has been absolutely outstanding in this process. 20, we're married, uh, been married 20 years la the last summer. So um, that's first and foremost. Um, you, you feel like you're at times you're, you're, you're not spending enough time at home and you're not spending enough time with your, with your student athletes. So you, you do get pulled, but um, the biggest thing is to have time management and organization, um, put together a good staff that, that, you can, that you can trust and you, you know all believe in the same things. And as best you can, um, when you go home, that's family time. And when you come to Hinkle, that's, that's work time. And there's some bleed over and crossover in it. It is what it is, but uh, I'm fortunate to have a very understanding wife and, and three daughters that uh, um, love Butler football. And how would you describe your time at Butler so far? It's been awesome. I mean, it's, it's an administration that cares. Um, they've worked hard to help. Um, you know, we believe in the same things. You know, they hear a lot about the Butler way. It's really the same philosophy I grew up in in coaching. Um, so th those meshed very well, and like I said earlier, just coming to work. The people that that um, we get to work with in Hinkle, um, it, it's a fun place. It's a caring place, and um, the the student athletes we get a coach and we get a watch play on the other teams. It's um, it's really uh, it's a neat place. And what's one thing that you hope to instill in every Butler player? Wow. One thing, I mean, there's, you know, I mean, you try to do a lot. Well, best effort, um, look yourself in the mirror and feel good about your day's effort and your investment in something bigger than yourself, I think is, is important. And that blends into being a, a good teammate and understanding in life, no matter what your, your success is or what your endeavor is, or that there are gonna be other people along the way that are gonna help you reach that success. So our guys give a great effort and they uh, you know they're good teammates I think that's important and um, you know and I know that's not one but um, an ad you know just choosing your attitude and understand the difference between feelings and attitude and how every day you're blessed to have an op the, the, the day's given you a blessing and an opportunity so we try to talk about all those things w within the game I mean there's more to it than X's and O's the, the, the edge the, the life lessons guys you know, student athletes get across the board in every sport, but we truly believe in football are, are invaluable. I mean, it's it's the, the number one internship they're going to ever have is is, is playing athletics, and um, you know, you hope that you don't teach up, you know, pass up a teachable moment just to, you know, get the right X and O drawn on the board. Well, thanks for being a part of Get to Know Your Bulldog this week. You're welcome. Next Enjoy up, being here. next up, we'll talk about Butler's game next week with Dartmouth. So this upcoming Saturday will be Dartmouth's first game of the season at the Butler Bowl. So what are the advantages to having Butler playing already three games as opposed to Dartmouth playing its first game? 
Well, I think you always you, you learn from going through it. You know, uh, practice, practice, game is game. So there, there's always something that comes up in your first game that that we've now been through, and the improvement you make from week one to week two is is um, exponential. I mean, the, the leaps teams make that way. So th there are some advantages to having played. Um, you throw in the, the fact that that we're, we're at home and not traveling. Um, so I, I think there are some things on our side. The, the unknown is that it's a first game. You know, there's no tape. They have new players um, in, in different spots. And, you know, they, they've, the players that are back have developed. And, you know, so th there's a lot of things that, are, that, that create unknowns, too, for you. So last year, Butler lost to Dartmouth in its home season opener. So having played them last year, what kinds of opportunities may be available to seeking redemption? Well, I mean, it's like, like we said earlier, it's, it's two new teams. Um, but some of the things that got us last year, we know we can't do again. I mean, we, we got we to gotta keep the ball in front of us, um, limit the gain. We got to slow their, their, their running attack down a little bit offensively. We, we, we didn't finish um, with any kind of regularity. We turned the ball over, didn't get points another time down in the scoring zone. So we got to do a much better job of, of finishing with points. We got to do a, a much better job of, of limiting the gain. And uh, special teams has to, has to be a positive factor um, in the game Saturday night. So what did the Bulldogs have to accomplish to stay competitive for the full 60 minutes? Well, I mean, it's all the little things. It's, it's um, being in the right gap, trusting the guy next to you, playing harder than, uh, than you can, playing faster, you know, playing with more emotion, all the, all the little things that, that help you win football games. And when we're really good, we, we do those things. And uh, if, you, if you're disciplined and you, you, you don't beat yourself and you're playing hard and you're, you're, you're playing fast, the ball tends to bounce to you and you just, you know, good eye discipline, make sure you're in the right spot at the right time, trusting the other guys. And, uh, um, good things seem to happen when we play that way. Now we're going to have to play that way for 60 minutes, which is um, one of the challenges right now is we haven't gotten to that point where we've played a full game. So hopefully that's Saturday night. Well, Coach Morris, thank you so much for coming to the studio today. I enjoyed it. Thank you. And thank you for watching Inside Butler Football. I'm JoJo Gentry. See you next week.